So we know that there are eclipses that occur. What an eclipse means is that something in the celestial bodies is eclipsed by something else in the celestial bodies. So let's say, for example, we have the sun, and we'll put the sun right here. It's not the sun unless it's smiling. And so here's our solar rays. And let's put the moon right here in this picture. Let's say that we put the earth right here. And let's say as the earth orbits the sun, perhaps it gets in this position where it gets in the way of the sunlight striking the moon. And by the way, we're not talking about phases of the moon here. We're not talking about new moon, full moon, gibbous phase, none of that stuff. This is just simply an eclipse. If we put the earth in the way of sunlight passing on to the moon, then what's going to happen? We're going to get earth's shadow on the moon. This, in this picture, would be a partial lunar eclipse. Lunar being the moon, eclipse being eclipsed out. So we are partially eclipsing the moon. Now let's say that the Earth was right here, and we've got another partial eclipse. We might see a shadow that looks like this. Let's put the Earth fully in the way, right here, and the Moon is completely eclipsed out. That would be a full lunar eclipse. So we can have these eclipses, and the cool thing is the Pythagoreans, many, many years ago, observed lunar eclipses. One thing they always noticed out of the hundreds of lunar eclipses that they saw was one constant. The Earth's shadow on the moon was always arched. The shadow was always arched. Whether it was a full lunar eclipse or partial, it didn't matter. The shadow always had a curve associated with it. Well, guess what? There is only one object in all of nature that we know of that no matter the angle of light striking it, the shadow is always curved. And that, of course, would be a sphere. So that's how we know that the Earth is round. Now you could say, well, isn't it just the angle? And no, it can't be. Let's say that we've got this flat sheet of paper. Let's say that this was round just for sake of argument. short. So let's say that that showed you a curve if this was a circle. All I got to do is do this and now you see flat. So with this, no matter the angle of inclination of the sunlight on that sphere, it's always going to be a curved picture. And that's of course how we know that the earth is round and we've known for hundreds, thousands of years going all the way back to 600 BC. Does that make sense? So here's our picture. We've got Alexandria right here, and I'm not going to draw this to scale. I'll try to embellish it a little bit. Here's Syene. And here's the sunlight coming down on June 21st. And June 21st, by the way, is an important date, and we'll talk about why a little bit later on. So the solar radiation is coming on down. Now right here in Syene, the sun is coming down directly overhead. But here in Alexandria, the sun's actually coming at an angle of around 7 degrees. So this angle here is around 7 degrees. Okay. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky with your geometry. If we've got two parallel lines of sunlight coming down, which we do, and if this angle here is 7 degrees and is bisecting the two parallel lines, then that means that this angle here is also going to be 7 degrees. That's just simply the law of parallel lines. So Aristophanes realized this as well, that if this angle between the wall and the sunlight is 7 degrees, then this angle here between Alexandria and Syene is also seven degrees of arc. By the way, you already know now what the distance is, seven degrees, right? It would just be seven degrees times 69. 
So we actually know what the distance between Alexandrus and Syene is. If we know it's 7 degrees, it's just 7 times 69. Back then, they didn't know that. So let's not interpolate that for the moment. Let's just stop for a second. So we know that the distance from A to S is 7 degrees of arch. Aristophanes also knew what the distance from A to S was. It's not that hard to figure out. All you got to do is walk from A to S, and you know how far it is. So they were able to determine distance. So this is what Aristophanes knew. He knew that the distance from Alexandria to Syene, whatever that value was, he knew. He knew that the angle between Alexandria and Syene was 7 degrees. He wanted to figure out what the circumference of the earth was. What would be the common angle if you want to know the circumference of the earth? You need to know this. How many degrees does that make? 360. So all we're doing is a really simple ratio. Distance from Alexander to Syene equals 7 degrees. That equals circumference of the earth divided by 360 degrees. Really simple equation. It's just a simple ratio. So now all Aristophanes does is he solves this equation for circumference because he knows this, he knows this, and he knows this. His value was as close to 24,000 miles in those terms back then as it could possibly be. Only 1 to 2 to 3% error. That's pretty impressive. So we know what the shape of the planet is by looking at eclipses. We know what the size of the planet is simply by looking at shadows and knowing some geometry. Now why am I spending time telling you this? It's not just so that you can impress your date one night. And so, baby, I know what the size of the planet is, and let me tell you how I know. It's not for that. As you guys are going through this course, you've already noticed as you flip through the textbook, there is a ton of information. You flip through the study guide, there are lots of questions. It seems like almost an insurmountable amount of information that you need to know. But what I'm telling you is, it really is not that much. I ask you to solve a problem such as what is the shape of the planet or the size and you get stuck for a little bit but then you see the solution and you go, oh, that's not that bad. For these guys back then in 230 BC, they actually didn't know a ton but what they knew, they knew very well. They knew geometry very well and more importantly than that, they knew how to observe extraordinarily well. So for this class, what you're going to find out is that we are a series of concepts a literal handful of concepts. And once you know the concepts, I can ask you a hundred questions and you should be able to answer all of them. And that's ultimately what the, the real punchline to this story is. Know a little, answer a lot. And that really is what it means to be an intelligent person, that thinking process. You cannot memorize the world but you can understand a few concepts and then try to figure out the world. And that's what really I'm asking you to do. Now, as far as an exam goes, do you need to replicate what Aristophanes did? No, but I might ask you, hey, how did Aristophanes know what the size and or the shape of the planet was? And you could say, well, by observation and by geometrical skill set, and then you'll probably be pretty much good to go. All right, anybody have any questions on that? So let's draw the sun. And let's put the earth in the picture. We know that the earth revolves around the sun. Like that. How long, by the way, does it take the earth to revolve once around the sun? A year. A year. And what's a year? 365 days. <laughs> okay, 365 days, but you know what? That's actually wrong. 364 and a quarter. No, that's wrong. It's 365.25 days. Yeah, so you're close. You're just off a day. Now, the question becomes, 
Why were you taught 365? Why was I taught 365? And the fact of the matter is, you can't put a quarter day on a calendar. It just doesn't make any sense. And so what have we done to fix this? Leap year. So every fourth year, we add one day to the calendar. We add February 29th. Is anybody born here on February 29th? Feb 28th? March 1st? Feb 28th? Wow, this close. March 1st? Do you know if your scheduled due date, you probably don't know this, unless you're parent, because maybe your scheduled due date was Feb 29 and your mom said, oh, hell no, get, get them out now, like the day before, so you wouldn't have the leap year experience. But if you're like February 29th, you only have a birthday every fourth year on that day, and the other three years, you got to choose the 28th or March the 1st to have your birthday. But that's why we have that one extra day. So 4 times 0.25 equals 1. And that's where, of course, this whole leap year experience comes from. So that's where our calendar is based upon. It is based upon the Earth's revolution around the sun. And that, of course, is what a year is. Now, as the Earth revolves around the sun, it actually does not make a perfect circle. It's slightly elliptical. If it's slightly elliptical, that means that there is a period of time where the Earth is furthest away from the sun and a period of time where the Earth is closest to the sun. When the Earth is furthest away from the sun, we call that aphelion. So ap is far and helion is the sun. So aphelion is furthest away from the sun. Anybody know what that value is? 0.25. 